So hello and welcome to the Some People podcast. I'm your host Briggsy and this is episode 12 of the Some People podcast. Wait. No, it's not. <laughs> Wait, yeah, we are recording episode 12. Even though we should be recording episode 11, but... Right. Sorry about that. I should have told you that in advance. That's all right. Well, well, roll with the punches, as they say. Yeah. And, well, we're going to go to a segment that I like to call the bloody news. <laughs> cool. This and, should be fun. Yeah, and this one is probably, well, I guess not really important news to anybody, but um, I guess I've got another, what, sleep consonant situation on my hands. <laughs> right. Which, if you go back to, I think, one of the earlier episodes of the podcast, um, I do bring up the fact that there was this one um, card from D4DJ Groovy Mix that I wanted to get so badly in the past but wasn't able to get. Mm -hmm. And it was sort of in a, well, I guess, a period of depression until I got the opportunity (laughs) to get the card again later, much later on. Right, yes. And I guess I'm going to have that situation again with, um, and well, another card. I can't remember the name of the card off the top of my head, but it's a uh, Maho card, which is another one of my favourite characters from the uh-huh. franchise. For sure. And um, I guess if it wasn't for recent events, I probably would be in like a slight depression right now. Uh-huh. <laughs> Interesting. And I guess with that, well, it's not really much more news to cover, so well, I guess that was the bloody news. Cool. And awesome. I guess... Moving on from that, mm-hmm. well, more, I guess, D4 DJ talk. Yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty sure the um, audience is going to be loving that. Is I'm that sure. um, while I was at Supernova, I actually got some artwork commissioned. Cool. I'm probably for um, the editor, probably going to have to take a better photo. So they're going to be seeing a better quality version of the, um, the commission that I um, well, well got while mm. I was there. Yep. Cool. Because, well, the image I've taken, I can't remember. There was one that was like real shite house and then one that was really <laughs> nice. Yeah, that was the shite house. There's the somewhat nice non, but due to it being late at night, I just didn't have the best lighting to get a good photo. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, I know. Best, yeah. what, 45 bucks ever. Not bad. Yeah, you might have to uh, bring it in. We can photocopy it to get a, okay. good, uh, a good digital. Although, well, probably going to get frame for it later yep. today maybe so yeah cool bring it in tomorrow anyway and that should make it a lot easier for sure definitely so well i guess well without the way we might as well kind of talk a bit more about my time at supernova because yeah well it'd be something different it was definitely different for me because it's something i don't normally do and it mm-hmm. kind of showed because i didn't really do that much while at <laughs> supernova besides well what going around looking at the various stalls as well as kind of just enjoying some of the cosplay in that. Yep, for sure. Although, oh, this is probably, I'm going to say this was the highlight when it comes to cosplay. There was this person that was cosplaying Mr. Bean. <laughs> Not only did he look exactly like Mr. Bean, he perfectly nailed the voice. Nice. And he even had that, that little monkey toy that he has. Oh, yeah. I think it's a, I think it's a Teddy. But I'm pretty sure the character is Teddy. Anyway. Oh. Yeah, but it's like a monkey <clears> day. <throat> I'm fairly sure it's a teddy bear. I'm pretty sure it was like a little monkey, yeah. A little monkey, monkey kind of teddy bear thing. Maybe. Well, I guess. Anyway. Well, cool. Again, there could have been changes over the time. And I think it was Possibly. more of a thing from the films instead of the show. Right, right. So is this your first time at Supernova? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I usually find your know, first time... You know, definitely my first time at like a really big music festival or something like that. You know, you sort of, uh, it can be a bit much at first and sort of taking it all in, but sort of like the second or third time going, you, you have a bit of a better idea of what you're getting yourself into. You know, you know, you might need to do a little bit more planning um, yeah. <laughs> just to make sure that, yeah, you sort of get, uh, get the most out of your day. Um, I think the, the most fun thing I was planning on doing was actually cosplaying myself, but I kind of half tasked it in the end. And it was like, <laughs> sort of like the best way to describe it is what they did with the stick, like, oh yeah, he's Chinese cousin and that. I kind of did sure. a small thing, but with Matt Pat instead. Right. And I guess since I'm Australian, I was like, he's Australian cousin. Yeah, for sure. He's a strange Australian cousin. <laughs> cool. Like, yeah, the Matt Pat jacket and everything. Yeah. 
rocking my aviators and well my RFS hat. For sure. And then all these boots because I've got no <laughs> other footwear besides thongs. Sure. <laughs> cool. And shorts because, well, what Australian in their right mind would wear pants. <laughs> I think sure. the only thing – well, I guess you can't get it really any more Australian than an ACDC shirt, though. Yeah. That, besides or maybe singlet. Yeah, I was going to say like a, a VB singlet maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So. Don't have one of those, or even a white singlet should do the trick anyway. Yep, for that, sure. I think that would look weird. Like you're just wearing a white singlet, and then you got a jacket over it. It's uh, it could be a look. <laughs> I don't think it would work well. No, it'd be a little bit uh, a little bit um, uh, what's the word? So sort of like working against itself. Yeah. To have, yeah, like a, a singlet and then a jacket. Um, um, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, photo of yeah, me, Hakan on, and well, a guest from earlier on. Cool. <laughs> nice. I had to kind of sneak in there. For sure. Although that doesn't really show my attire that well. <clears throat> um, where's the good one? I think it's that one or that one. No, it's this one here. Yeah. Definitely a, a better shot. Yeah. Jacket. Yeah, it's cool. A really nice jacket. It does look pretty cool. The color is uh, like the color. You can. The problem with a red jacket is if you have like the wrong wet, wrong red, it uh, can look very cheap. But yeah. that, uh, that's the sort of right red where it sort of. It Not looks only that, nice. but. Uh-huh. Cool. Rapid <laughs> For sure. Nice. You can see, yeah. Actually, it looked really nice with those gloves, though. They've mm-hmm. gone really well, although the gloves are a bit cheap and while well showing their age. One of them's kind of got a hole, if you know where to look at. Sure. Well, I guess we could... Oh, God. Why Facebook? <laughs> I found this while perusing about on Facebook. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, and, and stuff like this too. Uh-huh. I've seen that one before. Yeah. Not bad. Um, Another one. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> nice. Um, and then, well, this is also, again, on that same train of thought. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And, well, I guess we definitely have to show this meme on this episode because this uh-huh. is literally... The best way to describe me. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> Although not my kind of car though, but no. some, if someone had some nice mods done to it, I'd be like, hell yeah. Sure. So did you, uh, was there any, any meet and greets that you went to? Um, no, nothing. there was nothing that really excited me. So I kind of didn't really do any of those. Yeah. Was there any uh, standout stalls? Um, I think there was one, I think the Rogue Stand, and I'm guessing I'm going to give them a shout out because it was absolutely lovely what they did. Mm -hmm. And well, I had a fun time actually. I think most of the time I spent at the venue was at that, yeah, stall because well, it was a stall where you could actually kind of, yeah, have like a game of D&D as well as um, um, Magic the Gathering and I just did that for most of it. Yeah, cool. Nice. Like, I think I did two D and D campaigns and one Magic the Gathering match. I would have probably done another one, but it was getting pretty late. Sure. Nice. Have and you I ever played stall earlier? I probably would uh-huh. have been able to get a second Magic the Gathering uh, match in. Yeah. Was that your first time playing Magic? Yeah. Cool. I've uh, I've been playing it maybe the past three or four years, on and off. Yeah. So it's pretty fun. Once I get my own deck, I guess we can we can have a match live. <laughs> yeah, you could do that. That'd Although cool. I feel like I still am going to get destroyed, even though <laughs> I said that and I absolutely destroyed him. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I find... Uh, but that's because the best way to describe my deck was, it's kind of like, it's a deck that's really weak starting off, but once the gears start turning... For sure. It just takes off. It's like, you've got so much mana that you can pretty much summon some really OP stuff very quickly. Yeah. Cool. Was it a uh, green? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as you said it's so much mana. Um, yeah. That's basically like any green, a mono green deck 
It's just all about yeah, getting as much available mana as possible early on so then you can yeah, start yeah. dropping all your big dinosaurs Although, and beasts again, and things. The problem is it, it wasn't looking good at one bit because I was just okay. taking a heap of damage but the skin, I was wide open and there was yeah. no real defense that I could muster. Yeah. Yeah. That's sort of my the way that I, I play is like that where um, – like I'm pretty happy to take 10 to 12 hit points um, if I know that I can see something's going to like, the, the gears are turning in my favour. Um, yeah, and like then, the best way to describe my victory was like, yeah, it was clutch. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's how close it was. It was yeah, clutch. Like, for sure. Because again, I just didn't really have any, well, he had quite an, a, a good deck offensive wise, but yeah. Again, once I got that mana going and I actually got the well, some actual well creature cards and that, yeah. I was right. Yeah. And that's what was shafting me at the start <laughs> was I had like more than enough mana, but I was yeah. not getting the monster cards, just getting them all the, um yeah, land cards. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. When you get a, uh, get creature stuffed and just, yeah, all the mana sitting there and you're just like, come on, I need something yeah and then i got oh god i can't remember which one it was but actually no i think i got a champion card and that's when it really began to turn right cool because one of my champion's <clears throat> abilities was for i think negative one health mm-hmm. i could actually summon a um what a a um a 10 beast in that yeah cool nice so again months of that again well actually no don't summon a ten, i think it's that one that summons a 10 beast but also Oh, no, I'm thinking of no. That's the other one. The other one is um the one I'm thinking of gave like a massive bonus to like I think toughness and um power. Yeah, yeah. To one of the creatures that I chose. Yeah, I think cool. that was the champion ability. Right. Yeah. But then oh yeah, I think I had another card that allowed me to yeah summon a ten yeah like a ten beast as well. So yeah, by the end of it, I had like two ten beast and um one insanely buffed card with um death hand. Okay, cool. And then well, I had more than enough cards to defend myself. Yeah. I just <laughs> simply what I must did, I did the most startling thing and I just went and just pretty much had enough mana to send all my creatures onto us a, a direct assault. For sure. So pretty much just smashed through his damn defenses. So even if he was to defend, yeah. Just the sheer onslaught in that would have just obliterated itself completely. Yeah. Nice. That's uh, generally, yeah, how a lot of mono green decks go. It's just, yeah, building huge creatures <laughs> and yeah. then, yeah, battering ram through. I think the only reason why I didn't lose was just because I kind of kept my commander card just yeah. as a defense just because my commander card had indestructible. Yeah. So that yeah. means I always had a guaranteed complete block. block. For sure. Yeah, yeah. And even with someone would de- if they was to attack with a death touch card, then well, I could still what not lose a commander card and completely negate yep. the attack. Yep. So yeah. I always had a guaranteed yeah block. Yep. Yeah. The only way of getting rid of uh, indestructible indestructible creatures is um, by actually removing them with a card. So like you, um, you get a lot of cards in blue, which uh, which will say like. Um, put uh, opponent's creature back to their hand or something like that. So yeah, that's like the only way to get then, it off. since it was my commander card, I could have simply, what, for a custom mana, brought it back and with a shit ton of mana. Yeah, yeah. Don't get me wrong, it would have gave combat sickness, but then my soul could yeah. use it defensively. Yes, though. yeah, yeah, that's it. So there was no real point to trying to actually eliminate that card, but you were better off working around it. Sort of depends, you know, what, it, what its abilities are. But yeah, generally you're... Uh, if you can't uh, get it off the battlefield, um, trying to yeah, work a way, work around it is uh, generally the best way to go. But yeah. Actually, although I kind of did slightly oversee it because I kind of questioned him before mm. I, because um, the turn before I just incinerated him in that. Sure. I kind of asked him why didn't he attack because he could have killed me. Right, right. <laughs> but then I guess the thing was, again, he, I don't think he could have gotten guaranteed killed me mm. without leaving himself open. So if I survived, well, he's now a lot more open. He could see either yeah. way. For sure. 
For sure. Everything just kind of clicked there. But there was that one moment where it's like, only like, I think at best had two turns until the defeat. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that's how clutch it was. For sure. So yeah, that's where like. And that was after, but that was before taking the hit. So I would have only had one turn left anyway. Sure. Yes. So that's how close it was. It was really whatever. Yeah. He decided or whatever I decided to do would have made it. For sure. They're neck and neck. Cool. Although again, he was just again consistently steadily just doing damage throughout the match. Yeah. Right. Right. But I think the audience is probably not interested in that. <laughs> Although the the first D and D campaign was fucking awesome. Cool. What was your uh, your character class? Um, Rogue Assassin, which is actually the compl- uh, complete one eighty to how I normally play D and D. Right. What's your usual go to? Um, like something like a human warrior. Yeah. Just okay. Very what? <laughs> bone stock. Very vanilla. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I like I like big sword and like running big sword free people. Yeah. So uh, a very simple man with very simple needs. Yeah. So lots of uh, lots of attack, not a lot of intelligence. <laughs> um, probably what? Or strength, I should say. A lot of strength, I'd say about average intelligence. Nothing yeah. to write home about, but definitely sure. not low intelligence. <laughs> right. Right. But also pretty good armor class too. Yeah. Well, that's sort of what what you what you're gonna go for. If you're gonna be yeah like the. The uh, the big sword swinging character. You want a good armor class. Yeah, a lot of strength. Although, for both campaigns, I took zero damage. So, <laughs> which is weird because normally I'm the one who's taken all the damage. Yeah, yeah. I guess yeah. When you when you move over to that sort of class, like a rogue, um, a lot of the time you're spending a lot more of your time in the shadows, sort of sneaking or doing you know stealth. Although I think I kind of did the least stealthiest thing. Right. Which is what leads to the first campaign being so awesome because since we were on a ship and fighting the crew on the ship and that, mm-hmm. I decided to sneak off into the, um, the into one of the forward rooms which just so happened to have some cannons in them. <laughs> and guess what I did? You uh, used the cannons. <laughs> yeah, I literally turned the cannons around and yeah. fired it right at the um, forward mast. Yeah. And I, the, yeah, the cannibal slammed to the forward mast and it <laughs> collapsed. Nice. And smashed into the um, midship mast, yep. knocking the, um, the archer off it and the archer fell to its death. Yeah. Not only that, but killed another hostile with, well, that <laughs> act, same action as well as knocked a lot of them to the ground. For and sure. And done a fair bit of damage to them as well. Yeah, nice. And that was like the, and like, I think that was just the highlight of that campaign. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. The best way to describe it, like I explained to them, is like mm. why I did it was like just I wanted to add a little bit of chaos to it, the um, battle. Yeah, for and sure. I think I achieved that with spades. Yeah. <laughs> Considering the way I described it, yeah, not only did the mask come down, but all the rigging and shit just yeah. came down with it and it would have been awesome in an action movie. Oh, yeah, for sure. Sounds very uh, Pirates of the Caribbean or, um, yeah, something along those lines. That's cool. Yeah. Although at first I was like, you know, I'm going to cut down the mast with the um, archer on it. Uh-huh. But just again, with kind of me kind of not fully grasping the layout of the ship, that wouldn't have been possible. Right. Right. Yeah. No, that's thought, cool. Well, if I hit the forward mast well enough, it will go back on the midship mast. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Although I don't think logically it would kind of work like that, considering how masts tend to break. I mean, yeah. Probably not. It would actually, if but, anything, um, it would fall towards me. Possibly. Possibly, yeah. But then you guys got your <laughs> pitch and roll to take into consideration, but still. Yeah, I guess. Affected that much unless you're getting extreme pitches and that, and then at that point you've got more things to worry about than while losing a mask. <laughs> For sure. And I guess, you know, from a, from a DM's perspective as well, you know, uh, fudging the numbers when it comes to which, uh, which way it should have gone, um, yeah, might not have made the campaign or at least that moment in the campaign as interesting as, yeah, it just sort of having that more cascading effect. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's one of the sort of the cool things about D&D is that, yeah, sort of breaking the rules a little bit just to yeah. make it that little bit extra OP. <laughs> not only that, but... 
again, I think most of the things I'd done actually kind of made the fight a little too easy. Right. Like, literally, don't get me wrong, <laughs> I only got a few attacks in myself, minus, well, shooting the cannon at the mask. Sure. Can you really call that an attack? <laughs> it's, uh, it's a good question. I, would, I think so. I would count it. Okay, so then that would have been the strongest attack because don't get me wrong, it didn't kill anyone. Well, it did kill two people, but it did a lot of damage as well. For sure. Yeah, yeah. So I guess it's like would have been the powerfulest move done in, during that whole well, campaign. Yeah. Nice. But man, it was awesome. Not only that, but I was able to what, flip quite a few of the crew over to our side and cause a mutiny. Yeah, right. <laughs> and that's the first thing I did. Instead of going to fight, I literally just what, started a mutiny and then just vanished. And then, well, right. it's like, oh. There's a, cannon, there's a cannon here. Let me make use of that. <laughs> nice. And then after firing the cannon, I was able to disappear again. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Literally, I was just stealth 100 again. Yeah. Not That's- only that, but also was able to get a series, well, not a, quite a heavy hit, but a, quite a decent mm. hit on the um, captain with right. that stealth on that. Yeah. Nice. And then again, I was able to kind of disengage. Right. Right. Yep. Yeah. That's cool. And then he got the shit kicked out of him. <laughs> cool. Yeah, like his head got fucking smashed in with a, a, um, a hammer and that. Yeah. Nice. I was hoping to kill him so, be, so I could do like the look at me, I'm the captain now. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because I was totally going to do that if I killed the guy. Uh-huh. Nice. Cool. Any Although, other... The, we did kind of joke about, well, the fir- I did make the funniest joke, though, about when the first mate got killed, he's like, he's not going to go first mate, he's second rate. <laughs> nice. And I just did that on the fly, and I'm normally not good at doing jokes on the fly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I guess that's yeah, just cool. more my um, familiarity with naval terms, and that, though, I guess For I was sure. able to pull it off. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because a second rate is, well, a ship of the line. Right. Which is smaller than a first rate. Right, 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 right. Interesting. So were you still a rogue in the second yeah. campaign? Cool. Although I, although I can think keeping to that nature, mm-hmm. I found what, we were in this room and there was like this um, big like, um, what's, it's hard to describe it, but it's this like kind of, almost like a pond, but it's like a pond full of like blood and gore and that. Okay. <laughs> Everyone just started throwing shit into it. I find a chest full of gold. And guess what I do with the gold? I throw it in there as well. Mm-hmm. Which is kind of like the most, the one thing you would not expect a rogue to do. Mm. You would expect him to keep the gold, but nope, I just threw it in the pit. <laughs> the books and the other shit they threw in there, including the right. bodies of the goblins so yep. that we slide in it. Yeah, okay, cool. That room it was just hilarious what the DM <laughs> did with that. Mm-hmm. Although the others were pretty shocked at that. Right. Interesting. So did you throw all of the gold in? Yeah, all, right. <laughs> yeah, all 20 pieces. Right. Because I could understand, yeah, if it's like, uh, if, there's, if you think something sort of interesting might happen by tossing a coin in, you know, like a wishing well or something. Um, but yeah, to chuck all of the gold in, that's yeah. definitely next level. <laughs> <laughs> that's a pretty big wish that you're hoping for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it's like it works out to be like what two years of work, right? For, for like a poor person, for sure. Right. That's how much it was kind of worth. It's like two yeah. years of wages for a poor person in World of sure. D&D. Yeah, yeah. It just goes to show you, um, I guess, how more out out there that it was. Sure. <laughs> I think even someone who didn't really care about money would just kind of still see it as a waste. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Interesting. But God, imagine if one of them was an accountant, though. <laughs> they would be, what, fucking losing it, right? I would think so. Knowing how important money is. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Any other standouts from Supernova? Although, the f- actually, I want to keep talking about that same campaign. Oh, sure. Because um, I can't remember what they're called. It's not, the names are coming to me. I say, I say, no, it's not Basilisk. Um, a Bazir, there we go. Mm-hmm. Like all the other people, like throughout the entire time that they had the stall open up at Supernova, they never lit the um, Bazirs up thinking they were traps. So right. not only were the only group to light them up, <laughs> but we lit all of them up. Interesting. And even the person quite is like, kind of, he was a bit sad that like, we put all the effort into painting the flames and that, and that he didn't really get to use them until then. 
Right. And it always revealed a trap in that. So it just made life easier. <laughs> yeah. It also didn't help in that campaign that the poor goblins just got fucking murdered. <laughs> There's this room with two goblins. We just barged in and, and caught them by surprise. Uh-huh. They didn't get to do anything pretty much before right. they could do anything. Yeah. They yeah. just got and murdered. Cool. <laughs> nice. Awesome. Was there anything else in that campaign that was pretty wild? Oh, actually, besides that, there's nothing really. Mm-hmm. Besides just, I think that was really the first campaign that was the most outlandish of them. Right, right. That's cool. Nice. Although, I gotta say, the on the way back home was funny. Uh huh. Because literally, we were just seeing some like songs from like the 80s and 90s, and there was like all four of us in the car. Cause, um, sure. My, my, well, mum was driving me and, well, Simon up. But uh-huh. Grace decided to tag along with Mum and that. Yeah. And yeah. we're singing stuff like um oh, like Down Under. That's one <laughs> that comes to my head. I'm trying to remember some of the others. Yeah. I'll take on me. Cool. A lot of that stuff. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Nice. Oh, yeah. Oh, it was really fun for your The Voice. <laughs> and actually, I think I did a fairly good job because I kind of – I don't think I would have been able to match John Farnham vocal wise. Sure. I think it would be very hard to match him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He is. Uh, but I think I did a better good. job than I've probably ever done before when singing other stuff. Sure. Cool. Either that or just because everyone else's voices, I guess, kind of drowned out some of the more worse elements of, I guess, my voice. Possibly. Yeah, that is, yeah, it's sort of the type of song uh, that once uh, everyone's getting into it, it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty, pretty hard. To hear uh, your own voice within a crowd. It's a, Although, it's a good crowd well, pleaser. Actually, um, the problem is that I was kind of louder than everyone else. Right. <laughs> sure. Cool. I guess we can do that. We'll see how bad it is. We'll record it and get release it on <laughs> Patreon. <laughs> For sure. And then I guess people can judge how bad my singing is. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. Whenever we get Patreon going, that is. <laughs> That'd be funny. Cool. Um, Should we put warning? Probably going to make you deaf or make your ears bleed. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. Cool. Although I don't think it would be that bad. Probably not. Well, on that note, I finally, finally got around to um finish watching the um the well the English dub of Moriarty the Patriot, which kind of segues into. Mm-hmm. What I was originally going to plan on doing when going to Supernova was to cosplay as yeah, Moriarty himself sure. on for the show. Yeah, cool. Which would have been probably a lot easier to do than what I'm planning to do next year, which I don't think I'm going to do next year because I don't think I can get it to well make it to a point where I think it would be satisfying and worth it. But I, I right. just want to do it because I'd love to do it and also, well, I'd end up getting a pretty neat jacket out of the process anyway. Right. So even when I wasn't playing the character, I guess I could still get kind of the show out there by rocking that jacket. Sure. <laughs> Although I think I, I like the jacket so much, I wouldn't want it to get ruined, so I'd probably just sit in my couple of like, my other nice jackets. Uh-huh. Yeah. Like that jacket that I was wearing at that yeah. event, don't even wear that much sure. at all. Yeah. 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 It's, it's one of those things... Um, yeah, when something's so nice, do you yeah, try and keep it in pristine condition and only wear it um, you know, on special occasions, or do you, you know, really um, get it, get the use out of it, sort of thing? Especially considering these are quite expensive. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Although the one thing I didn't like about that jacket, it's actually it's a, a um, vegan leather jacket. Right. I would rather had it as proper leather. Right. But it's still pretty nice and comfy, though. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. So I cool. guess other than that, and my, I guess, sounds like I'm getting a jack fetish, a jack <laughs> fetish. <laughs> uh-huh. Interesting. Although, like, and I think you can tell who I probably would cosplay as, though. Let's see if you can figure it out. Hmm. Someone that wears a jacket? Yeah. Right. So that does narrow it down. A little bit. Um, hmm. What color is the jacket? Oh, that's okay. That's interesting because that would narrow it down a lot. Black. 
Ajá. Mm. Oh, I was going to say that, but that would give it away because it's actually more than just, well, it's more than one color, but the second color would be kind of a dead giveaway. Right, right. So I might keep that a secret, maybe. <laughs> um, hmm. Yeah, black sort of doesn't really help. Um, oh, uh, is it is it from a, a, a video game or a show? Both. Both. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Because, well, technically both. Right. Oh, well, actually, yeah, it is both. Okay. That uh, that doesn't help. I had an idea. Uh, I'll. I'll, what was your idea? I'll run it past, it? yeah. Well, it could be two. So I'm thinking it's either Arthur Morgan or um, or John Marsden, but I'm pretty sure John wears a brown coat from memory. Um, uh, well, I think I Arthur's like, is blue, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, although there is Dutch that wears a black jacket. Um, yeah. Yeah. Although he's not really associated with that kind of jacket, though. He's more like his, um, his vest and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Much more his vest. Um, hmm. Although I wouldn't mind having that. <laughs> a vest that's similar to his. For sure. Or similar to the one that you've seen while I put on Arthur. Yes. But those would cost a small fortune, though, because you'd have to get them custom made, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, if you, want, if you wanted those yeah, exact patterns... I mean, you can get get things pretty similar, um, yeah. But yeah, if you wanted that exact pattern style, you would need to go custom. I would think. Um, how much are custom vests anyway? I mean, it depends on the material. Uh, that one that Dutch wears, I feel it's going to be proper leather. So if you yeah try to go proper leather, custom that particular pattern, you'd. I would say at least 200, but probably more. Yeah, that's 200 is probably like low, like low end. Yeah, yeah. Like if you were going to go like really good leather though, which would probably be what Dutch would do. Yeah, for sure. You'd be probably looking at almost a grand or two. Possibly, yeah. But I think wouldn't be that be there. like really high end leather though? That would be, yeah, some pretty high end stuff. Um, but you might need that for that particular pattern that's on his vest. So, yeah. Who knows? Hmm. Um, back to the guessing. Yeah. <sighs> I think you've got um, one question I could narrow it down that would come to my mind, and I wonder if that's the question you were just about to ask them. <clears throat> um, oh, that's... I was going to say possibly Crow from Ruby. but oh, That would have been interesting. But, uh, but there's um, no the game. The problem with that, well, there is. Is there? Yeah, there's like a couple. Oh, okay. I wasn't aware. They're probably questionable quality, but I'm not sure. Sure. <laughs> I can't be the judge of it, but just kind of. With Ruby, they came out like, actually there's one in development right now. Right. Arrow Fall or something like that. Okay. I think I'm not pronouncing the name correctly, though. Right. And then you've got Grim Eclipse, and then I think you've got various mobile games. I think sure. almost all of them have been closed down, I think. Right, right. And I think there may be one still going. Interesting. Though I think that one that's still going got poured over to Switch, and I think that was Grim Eclipse. Oh, okay, right. Interesting. Um, hmm. I'm not sure. I don't have any other ideas. Although you're kind ideas. of on a bit of the wrong train of thought, though. Mm-hmm. Because, um, well, the, I might as well give you this freebie, the, um, well, the, which is the gender of the character, which is female. Ah, right. So that should hopefully be a dead giveaway. Hmm. Considering that off the top of my head, there's only one character that, that would kind of fit the bill. And that right. would, definitely would do, although there's definitely a few characters female characters I know that way it would wear a black jacket though. Uh-huh. Hmm. I guess as well like uh 
I'm sort of thinking I maybe went the wrong way and was thinking more coat than a jacket. Um, so a black jacket. Hmm. Well, they're talking about that. I wouldn't mind like getting a dust coat or a trench coat, but that has nothing to do with it. <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, are they from D4DJ? Yes. <laughs> that should really narrow it down. Oh, um, damn. Uh, I'm forgetting, <laughs> forgetting a name now. Um, I mean, are they from Happy Around or Peaky Peaky? Peaky Peaky. Yeah. Okay, at this point, now you can't like a one in four chance of getting it right. Uh huh. So um, get it right the first time round. I've forgotten a name. That's uh, it's the worst thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, man, the one with the pink hair. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. D- yeah. Shinobi, or yeah. also known as yeah, DJ Kanoichi or DJ Shinobi. Sure. Just don't tell, just tell her that. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. I'd love to do it. I don't think I could pull it off, but I would love to do it. That'd be cool. The, uh, yeah, the, the pink bob. Yeah. Would be interesting. Yeah. That'd be cool. Maybe I could match it personality wise, but I don't for sure. think I could um, be as, um, what's the word I'm looking for? As um, snidey. Sure. So yeah, standoffish. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And yes, yes, she is. Yeah. So sort of snide or um, you know, a little bit entitled, I guess. Well, I wouldn't say entitled because I guess it's kind of she's at that kind of skill level where there's not really many that can oppose her. Sure. So I guess it's more kind of just um, pride, I guess, than anything else. Yeah, I guess so. Something like that. I'm surprised it took you that long. It should have been <laughs> obvious, considering I did show you commission data of it. That should have been a dead giveaway. Oh, anyway. right. Yeah. Anyway, cool. Um, Let's say what's how long we've been recording in that. Um, that's not going to help. <laughs> Hopefully it's still recording. Yeah, wow. Really? A little <laughs> bit longer than that. Yeah. So I guess that. just because I guess it felt like a bit a bit dragged out <laughs> considering it took you a while to get it. Sure. Yeah. Cool. Um any other standout stuff? Was there anything that happened that was like uh sort of unexpected? Um, well, actually, you can. Well, I guess the unexpected thing was me winning the art um, thing. Yeah. Because um, they had this kind of like prize. The um, the Rosen had this prize thing where it's like, yeah, you can just simply yes enter a raffle by simply yeah like kind of playing a game and that. Right. Yep. Not cool. only that, but um, I think. Uh, and I actually ended up winning the um thing for D and D, and was and I ended up winning it because of my second campaign. So yeah. I okay. Sat a second one. Yeah. Cool. Nice. The yeah, only reason why I can tell was the second ticket was because actually I put my address on the first ticket. I didn't put it on my second one. Ah, oh, okay. Right. That's the only way we were able to tell was the second ticket. Sure, sure. And it was lucky I was still what I decided to go around and do some late shopping before leaving. And if I hadn't done that, uh huh. I wouldn't have been able to collect it straight away. Yeah, right. Literally, as we were heading out, we ran into the um, one of the blokes. They were at that stall. Yeah. Yeah, it gave me the news. <laughs> cool. And uh, I, sw- I could swear my phone was ringing as I was looking around, but mm. I go to kind of go to pull my phone out or check. It's like not ringing. It's like kind of paranoid or something. You know, sure. I, was, I must have been hearing damn things and my phone <laughs> rings all day. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I should be up pretty good at, well, knowing if my friend rings or not because, well, yeah. it's not something – it's something that's going to stand out in the chance of, well, the – um raises right, a ringtone being played mm-hmm. is very unlikely well, extremely unlikely. So that means if I'm hearing that, I'm either listening to it or my phone's ringing. Sure. 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 Yeah. And I think that it kind of did happen once I was actually listening to the song mm-hmm. while listening to a playlist that I had that song in it. I started listening <laughs> and then it started playing and I didn't think it was ringing until much later on. Yeah. Sure. Well, I should have known something was up considering it would have not been the full length though. Yep. 
<laughs> I guess I was not only busy working, but sure. I guess I was just enjoying the the music too much. Mm-hmm. So other than the uh, the artwork that you got commissioned, what what else did you pick up? Um, I got the um, the knife from Rambo one. Okay, cool. As a compass and like even a little kit for starting fires, but it looks like a firecracker instead of a fire starting kit. Sure. I'm yeah. just going to use a firecracker to start fire, <laughs> though. Yeah, I would think so. No, that's cool. Nice. And what was it that you won? I won, well, some D&D related stuff. I actually got oh. the, um, the Dungeon Master kind of screen so you can kind of lock, yeah. which kind of gives the Dungeon Master a uh, kind of like a quick reference for some of the key rules and that, but also kind of keeps some stuff, well, hidden from the other players and that. But yes, also got the all the free like kind of guidebooks. You got um, the player guidebook, the DM guidebook, and then the monster kind of the a guidebook that covers the monsters and that. Yeah, nice. That's a pretty good, uh, pretty good win. Yeah, it's like a retail value of like hundred and seventy US. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say be because yeah, I think each book is around the fifty dollar mark, and then um, yeah, the monster one. Maybe a little bit more expensive, but yeah, that's cool. They're all pretty damn thick looking at Yes, them. they are. <laughs> Although I think it's fifth edition though. Yeah, yeah. That's like the, the latest ones. Um, and then there's little like companions, I guess, sort of updates on different... Uh, things and that. Yeah, different things. Although I wonder how much like the um, first edition goes for though. That'd be interesting. I have no idea. I guess uh depends on condition as well, but... I'd say at this point it'd be up there. Well, when did the first edition come out anyway? It's a good question. Seventies, maybe. Yeah, somewhere in the seventies, I think. Uh, so I guess it'd be like the um the only like I guess I could say I guess this probably can be viewed as offensive, but only the really nerdy players would probably have their hands on the first edition anyway. Probably, yeah, yeah, or collectors. Yeah, I, I know. Um, my. My my partner's pop is a massive collector, and he um he's been collecting Magic: The Gathering cards since Alpha, which is like the first run of cards. And um, he is telling us a couple of weeks ago he just sold some of his collection, and one of the cards went for ten thousand dollars or something like that. Wow! And he bought it for like two hundred back in the day. <laughs> just crazy. Um, yeah, and just goes to show you that, yeah, if you can stumble across these in pretty good nick, you yep. can make a fair bit. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's uh, pretty crazy. Piece of, piece of cardboard. My question is, um, do you play D&D? Um, not regularly, but uh, I do. I've played it in the past a couple of times. I think you'd be an interesting DM in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've uh, I've only DM'd once, um, but it's fun. Yeah, I I'm not sure where I'd sit on the kind of the spectrum of DM though. Uh huh. Yeah, there's a. Uh, I think for me, the biggest thing is like the pressure <laughs> getting yeah. to you, yeah, and like having to um, ha- having to have everything sort of prepped and in place, but being able to um, kind of improvise. improvise, yeah, on the fly as well. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it can be hard, but... Yeah, like yeah. if you get a really good DM, you're going in for a good time. Oh, yeah, yeah, good DM definitely makes I'm the, not a fan uh, of what the, the, the group that I was a part of's DM, which kind right. of did hurt my experience with D&D. Yeah. Because uh, like, I was having fun doing them, but I was like, yeah, this DM's a bit of a dick. Right. <laughs> And it doesn't help that my relationship with him is not that great even now. It's just sure. like, yeah, we get along and we kind of tolerate each other, but I wouldn't say we're like buddies. Yeah, sure. Yeah, having uh, yeah, someone, yeah, that obviously, you know, you can sit with and enjoy their company as well as, you know, them being a good uh, good DM, uh, definitely. Yeah, so I think I would be kind of a bit of it. Now, I think I'd be an all right DM because I'd kind of probably let some things slide that a lot of DMs probably wouldn't. Sure, yeah. But then I think that I definitely know there would be some times where I'd probably put my foot down hard, though. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Because uh, it, you kind of want to give the, the, um, the players freedom to sure. do what they want, but yeah. then you can't let them, well, do dumb shit. Yeah. You, like, if you're going to do something really stupid, yeah, I'm going to make you <laughs> suffer a terrible fate. For sure. Yeah. Like, you do something so well, – I guess if you do something stupid enough, I just make it like, yeah, you just straight up die. Yeah, for sure. And it's one of those things as well, you know, like if you've got a very – specific story or, you know, path that you want the characters to go down and, um, you know, yeah, yeah, you leave some room for, for moving in and in and out of the story. But yeah, if there's some things which are just going to completely break it. So like everything falls apart in, I guess, yeah, the main story idea, then so yeah, you do need to be able to put your foot down every now and then. I would say like, I kind of see me being like kind of um, the narrator from the Stanley Parable. Okay. Kind of having that kind of a bit of that improvisation, but them eventually just losing his shit. Sure. <laughs> if you're familiar with the Stanley Parable games or game. No, I, I, I'm not familiar with them. Well, but, um, actually it's kind of one that's been updated than that. Right. Okay. Cool. It's actually kind of really nice. It's, I'd recommend you watch like a YouTube video of yeah. someone playing the game. I'll have to look into it. It's a very simple game, but it's actually quite um, thought-provoking. Okay. Interesting. Cool. Because it kind of is a bit of a, a um, what's the word I'm looking for? A bit of a, um, a meta critique on the state of video games nowadays. Oh, okay. Right. Which just makes it even more, I guess, enjoyable. Yeah. That's interesting. Cool. Because so I think it does even cover the it does cover the key point, and it's I think one of the failings of video games nowadays is that mm. um, you kind of spoon fed a story in video games nowadays instead of kind of being able to kind of go off and do your own thing. Sure, yeah, yeah. There's definitely uh definitely a lot of games that are like that. You know, definitely in the uh, you know the Call of Duty series, um, especially the later ones. You know, where it is just yeah, like. Just and and the story itself isn't in, isn't very good either. Like, you know, yeah, very, the early good Call of Duty games it was excusable because the story was good. Yeah, 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 for sure. And it was because the story was good. It's kind of worth being railroaded. Yep. <laughs> but one thing I like about the earlier ones, and this is like the really early ones, is that yeah, you got an objective, but you can go by kind of do it by any means. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, there's a little bit uh. You know, it's not obviously full like open to, world, but yeah. Yeah, like you had to do that objective, but you can go about any way of doing it. Yeah, you can go, you know, running in guns blazing, you know, head first, or you can get a little bit more stealthy. Yeah. 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 I think, um, I think, yeah, that's why I really like more games like Skyrim or something like that. Yeah, we can kind like, of be like, fuck the story. I'm going to go do my <laughs> own thing. Yeah. You can, or like, yeah, Red Deb, where, you know, you can sort of just go and camp in the wilderness for yeah. an entire week within the game. And then obviously you come back to camp and they're like, where the hell have you been? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've been uh, doing all the jobs. You need yeah. to start picking your, picking your weight. But I think they quickly change their mind when you shop with more than enough pelts. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, although pretty much like it doesn't seem like how much you put into the, the community chest sort of thing. It, Dutch is always coming over and saying like, you need to put more in. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's usually Grimshaw that gives me the risk. Me the there is, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's just... The character as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, those little things are, are cool. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And I think that's what I think a lot more of, actually, even a good example of, well, kind of it being done well, but then being done terribly is the um, Fallout franchise. Just look at um, how mm-hmm. many ways you can complete just one mission in like New yeah. Vegas. Yeah. Where there's like little to no kind of, well, different options for Fallout 4. Right. Or if not, they're just going to end up with just kind of the same conclusion, but just a different banner. Right, sure, Especially sure. Especially with its ending. Like you get, no matter what you do, you get the exact same ending. It's just what fraction you decide to side with instead. Yeah, right. 
So I haven't played four. I played a little bit of New Vegas. New you know. Vegas is good. I haven't completed it, but yeah. I've enjoyed watching this series that was made by using the game and just what a heavily modded version of the game. Right. And it's kind of funny because <laughs> um, one of the people that are a part of that series is like a, um, a co-op series. So it's, yeah, modded mm. to the point where it's actually two-player, but I'm a bit sus about that. Sure. <laughs> But I think they do do a good enough job making it believable that it's actually like two players playing, even though I don't think that's the case. Right. Interesting. Although apparently there is a mod for Fallout 4, though. Right. That allows that, but I'm not sure if New Vegas has something like that. It probably does now, considering its age and how many mods there are out for it. Yeah, for sure. Hell, there's probably like a bajillion versions of that mod that, of <laughs> mods like that that are probably not working anymore. Yeah, I'd say so. Another another good game, sort of, I guess, along that line is, um, and a series of games is Mass Effect. Yeah, um, well, I'm not sure much about. Like, I think the first one was pretty good. First one was good. The second one is very good. Um, third was, wasn't the third one a bit of a miss? The third one, you know, I liked it, but the yeah, drama, though, that one of it wasn't great. Yeah, I think. Um, I think that there definitely was a lot more focus on the graphics and um, some of the sort of more mechanical things. Um, Although I draw in terms of graphics was completely broken. Right. <laughs> like, have you seen some of the bugs in that or clips or compilations of bugs in Andromeda? No, no, I haven't. I've never played Andromeda either. So yeah, don't, not too familiar with it. Um, but yeah. I uh I like I like three. Obviously, it's one of those things as well where you know they had to you know finish the that main sort of story, and uh, I don't think anyone was ever really going to be happy with it. Yeah, satisfied um, with an ending. Um, Not only that, but then it, after two games of where you can make ch- choices that can radically yes. alter the outcome, it's kind of hard to continue onwards from the third. And kind of then they do a blank slate start for the third one. Um, well, kind of. I don't think so. I think, yeah, because that was definitely a big part of the Mass Effect games as well as being able to, like, actually continue your character from the first game to the second game to the third. I don't think it was a, a clean slate start yeah. from memory, but it's been a long time since yeah, I played it. Yeah, but again, it. imagine how hard it would be, though, to have to take in to consideration all the different possible choices a player oh, yeah. can make and then make the next game's events play out the way you want it to play out, but it would work with the choices the player made in the previous game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, I guess, yeah. And then obviously having to try and fit in some sort of ending. Um, that also would even, that would also, well, work with the player's choices yeah. and that yeah. they made in that game as well. It's kind of almost the butterfly effect in a nutshell. But imagine the amount yeah. of, again, manpower and time it would take For to sure. m- make, pull something like that off. Definitely, definitely, yeah. Um, they, I guess by making such a good game out of number two, they sort of shot themselves sh- in the foot. Yeah, shot themselves in the foot for number now, three. Now you've got a lot of branching paths from the first game that you kind of got to continue onwards in the second game. And also be able to but try then, and wrap them up. And Not only that, but then by doing that, you're going to create even more branching paths for the third game. And it's yeah. just at this point of spiders where by the time you get to the third, yeah, then you're sure. really start wrapping things up. For sure. <laughs> yeah. And then oh, draw it is just a complete mess. Yeah. I, um, yeah, never played it. I've heard it's not good, so <laughs> it no, probably won't ever. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I definitely recommend all three. Um, you know, the first one again is pretty good. It's a little bit clunky, obviously, for its age. You know, being a, a Xbox classic game. Yeah, but I'm um, not sure if I would be able to enjoy Mass Effect. It's not my kind of cup of tea. Sure. Yeah. Like again, I think Fallout's definitely more my cup of tea. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're pretty similar in the the gameplay and the sort of mechanics. Um, Not really, because you kind of got some, well, well, some special abilities in that in the Mass Effect games, if I remember correctly. Again, yeah, it sort of uh, depends which which path you go down as well. But yeah, you do have yeah some of those like more uh, 
obviously Sorry, being Alex? a sci-fi game yeah being yeah, a sci-fi game Alex? i can't remember it's, again i'm not familiar with the fallout. yeah not, not <laughs> fast fallout. why did i yeah. say fallout so yeah obviously being a sci-fi game um yeah they've taken advantage of yeah being able to add some of those other uh sort of yeah uh biotech elements and, and things like that. Well, wasn't, wouldn't that make it more science fantasy than sci-fi? Ooh. Yeah, science fiction or, or science fantasy, I guess. I think I'd say Mass Effect kind of leans more towards science fantasy, which, especially with the kind of bionics and that. I guess so, yeah. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't really say, yeah, it's, it's like on the magic side of things. Like it's not like, yeah, but I think that's, it's kind of bordering it, though. It is, yeah. I guess so. Where There's I can a... say Fallout does oh, yeah. firmly <laughs> sit in science fiction. For sure, yeah. Post-apocalyptic sci-fi. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, well, I guess it's kind of... Well, I guess it's sci-fi in a way because it's like kind of if technology went down a different route than what it had in our timeline. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like, again, one of the biggest things about the Fallout universe as well, the transistor is not really a thing. Like the the most advanced electronic component is the vacuum tube. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and that's like a real big thing in the decor and the design. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it, it does sort of have those um sort of almost steampunk, or not, yeah, steampunk elements. Um, where yeah, you've got that more like classic, um, sort of pre fifties uh, technology. And yeah, obviously vacuum tubes and... I think they went a little overboard with that when it came to some of the weapon designs in Fallout 4, like the assault, the quote-unquote assault rifle. Right, right. In the game, uh-huh. which basically um, a mismatch of machine guns. Right. <laughs> yeah. Although its core design is very well reminiscent of something like a Lewis machine sure. gun, which is like World War One era, which is definitely a bit more fitting because it's got that oldie feel to it, but then... Yeah. It feels out of place because it came quickly obsolete and by the, would probably mm-hmm. have been considered an obsolete machine gun by kind of even before the point where it diverges. Right, right. Yeah. Although, but then I think that also causes issue because then you get weapons like the service rifle, which is kind of like, I think, based off the prototype, very well, similar to the M16, but also kind of the prototype M16. Sure. I remember correctly, but I'm not 100% sure. Yeah. Which kind of does break that kind of feel because, well, that weapon would have definitely well and truly came after the point of divergence and the law of fallout. Right, right. Interesting. And I guess it's really hard, mm. though, for them, the other weapons, which are more kind of, yeah, they came from this time period of divergence and have no real reference to a real life weapon. Yeah, 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 for sure. So, One yeah. thing I like is the combat shotguns. Mm hmm. Because if you mod them the right way, they kind of do all in Fallout 4. You mod them the right way, they look like a, a PPS H41. Right. Or a sort of res- bear resemblance to it. Yeah. Interesting. I don't think you can do it with the combat rifle, though. Right, right. I don't think you can get the drum mag for the combat rifle. You can get it from the... I think you can get it from the combat rifle. So, yeah, I think it was that one I can made it to look like a PPH 41. I'm not sure if that was that, the combat shotgun. Right. Cool. Although the combat shotgun was pretty good in the other Fallout games, though. <laughs> yeah. I think there was one companion, Sharon, who was like, uh-huh. who's like probably one of the more powerful companions you can get in Fallout 3, but just give me the combat shotgun and you can just, yeah, snipe people with it. Right. <laughs> Literally, like, he has, like, I think it's just some ability that, that the devs gave him and that, yeah, his shotgun practically has no spread. Crazy. So that means he can pretty much do as much damage at like a range where you would struggle to hit a dome with a sniper rifle. Yeah. But do the same amount of damage as he sh- as a shotgun at point blank range at that range. Yeah, sure. Which, if you know how shotguns work, that's impossible. Oh yeah. Yep. <laughs> Even in a game player's wise, it wouldn't work like that because mm-hmm. I'm not sure how many games do this, but I know it's a thing that um. This one mod for Fallout 4 does is it more like, yeah, that, the shotgun has a really high damage, but the damage, that total damage is, it wouldn't do that total damage. That's like the total damage it can do per pellet. Right. So that means all the pellets 
hit the target and they do all the well do the maximum damage and then you get like that five like 408 or or in, with perks like 560 right right but then again you have to break that down to how much damage per pellet and it's like about 15 to 20 damage per pellet sure yeah or something like that but you can see how yeah that works balanced yeah for sure yeah. So, like, yeah, if you hit fire at long range, not all the pellets are going to find their mark. No, no. Interesting. Meaning that if you want to reliably do a shit ton of damage, you have to get up close and personal. Yes. Yeah. And I think that damage model also does shaft the vanilla double barrel shotgun because one, it makes it really weak compared to the other shotguns, but two, mm. I think, to the way it, it's the game files, it also applies that kind of that damage system to it. And due to it having much lower damage than the modded shotguns, that means it's per pellet that's really low. Right, right. Even with, like, the advanced receiver and perks. Uh-huh. Which really hurts its performance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And really necessitates the long barrel, because mm-hmm. then it does help tighten up the spread a bit. Sure. I think. Yeah. I feel like that actually is. I think the spread mechanic is from the vanilla game, maybe. Right, right. I'm not sure. Interesting. Cool. But I think that also goes to show, I guess I'm, I guess, not only I'm just a gamer, but I guess I'm familiar, I've got some <laughs> old knowledge when it comes to game design. Sure, yeah. I wouldn't say I'm an expert at game design, but again, I know little details like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's cool. And I like how the, um, that, I'm not sure if the base game does it, but I like how the mod- models shotguns working like that because it's mm. a lot m- kind of more realistic representation yeah, yeah, for sure. Of a shotgun, then, well, having the shotgun simply do really high damage at only close range. Yeah. Yeah. Like, don't get me wrong, the shotguns still do that, but as the range opens up, mm-hmm. you can either do quite a bit, quite a lot of damage, or fuck all if you re- sure. get unlucky with, like, <laughs> the spread in that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But then you can modify the shotguns to ty- well, by putting a longer barrel on. Mm-hmm. tightens up the spread or even putting a certain choke on will also tighten up the spread which then allows you to kind of mm. keep maintain that kind of maximum hitting power at further ranges yeah because the longer because again the shot is only going to sp- um, spread out as much as it can in the barrel mm-hmm. yeah, the barrel yeah. kind of keep the shot tight together so as soon as it leaves the barrel it's going to explode out mm-hmm. yes yeah interesting and then with chokes you can kind of sort of force them to even tighter in before they leave out the barrel. Yeah. Which means that yeah, they'll still spread apart as soon as they leave the barrel, but since they're they're close together, it takes a bit more distance for them to get that similar spread as they would just initially leaving the barrel. Sure. Yeah. Interesting. Although what, getting hit by one or two pellets can do a fair bit of damage, but getting hit by like a, a, almost the <laughs> full spread of pellets is going to do a lot of damage. Oh, yeah. For well, sure. Not only that, but the has a very interesting effect right. if you get hit with a tight spread of buckshot. Mm-hmm. Because, yeah, the one pellet of the line can still go through you and do a fair bit of damage, but it's almost like a, um, a compounding effect if you get hit by a tight spread because the closer together the pellets are, it's almost like a more concentrated force over one area. It's yeah, like, yeah, for sure. So don't get me wrong, those pellets are still delivering the same amount of force, but since it's concentrated in a certain area it's just a lot more damaged yeah it's very definitely. hard to kind of explain it i'm probably not explaining <laughs> it right but general just is the tire of the spread generally the more damage a buckshot can do in real life and in video game sure if yeah they model it in video game correctly that is sure yeah no Actually, I think that the makes way sense they model it i think it still does have that kind of pellet spread in the vanilla game but it's actually fewer pellets right right i think it's more pellets in the mod yeah okay Interesting. And also, I think further shafts the vanilla double barrel shotgun as well as combat shotgun. Right, right. Although the mod overall just makes the um, vanilla weapons kind of obsolete. Sure. Just like compare, like the like even late game vanilla weapons, their damage yep. is about comparable to um, a pistol you can get from the mod right from the beginning. Oh, okay. Right. That just shows the fact the power scale. Yeah, sure. So late game rifles would be matching what pistols you can get right off the bat. Yeah. <laughs> on the mod. It just shows you the damage difference. 
for sure. Yeah, yeah. And then what? Interesting. You probably like some of the really powerful rifles. Uh huh. May just match some of the more weaker rifles in the mod. Sure. Interesting. And that just again shows you the power scale. Like uh, yeah. when I mean weaker rifles, I mean carbines. Right. Which are essentially short barreled rifles. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Which do that's. Actually, no, I think it's more mid gain some of the pistols, but it's caliber. I think some of the higher caliber pistols can get up to 60, 80 points of damage, but I think that's with perks. Right. But right. I think they're definitely, yeah, the 50, the, I think, yeah, 50 is high end for the modded pistols mm-hmm. without perks, and I think it's 60, 80 with perks. Right. But compare okay. that to what you'd be getting early game, which I think the 10 mil pistol right off the bat is like less than 20 points of damage. Right. Compare that to like a five seven, which is doing like fifty one points of damage right off the bat. Uh huh. <laughs> you can see how. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Cool. The only real incentive to use vanilla weapons would be well, you got no ammo for something like the five seven, yeah. which ammo is a bit of a bitch to come by because well, it's a five seven. Yeah. And it uses a five point seven by twenty eight mil bullet. It's sure. What named after the bullet it uses. Uh huh. <laughs> Cool. There's not many guns that use the 5.7 cartridge. So 5.7 is just, don't get me wrong, people make shit tons of 5.7, but due to there not being many 5.7 firearms around, 5.7 ammo is just not going to be common. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Makes sense. All right. Should we uh, start wrapping this one up? Yeah, before we kind of delve into <laughs> wild guns and wild mechanics relating around them. Yes, for sure. Um, so overall, your experience at Supernova... For the it first was time, really good. Really good. Well, that was kind of funny how I kind of ended things because I think what just to kind of wind down, I was started watching. Well, uh, I think it was an episode of Two Moriarty, The Patriot. Sure. I had some snacks and that, and I think decided you know I brought some cheap whiskey beforehand. I might as well give that a try. Uh huh. I think I gave myself a half class just to wind down. And boy, it was a bit rough going down. <laughs> Not only that, but it had a burn about comparable to so high proof, um, high proof bourbon. Sure. Interesting. Which was interesting because it was like 80 proof whiskey. Yeah. And it's about comparable to like 101 proof bourbon. Yeah, right. So it going down was real rough. It yeah. It was like a Scottish whiskey. Right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you definitely um I, that is definitely more of a more of a, a a Scotch whiskey sort of characteristic especially on the cheaper side. Yeah. Yeah, you get a, a pretty intense burn. Um yeah. <laughs> it's not the burn that made it rough. It was just rough going down. Sure. Yep. Interesting. So I like stuff that have, have that kind of, yeah, tense burn to them. Right. Yeah. Probably not good for my freight in that. Probably not. <laughs> cool. All like right. I think I took a whiff of it and I was like, oh, yeah, I know what I'm giving myself into. For I sure. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It can sometimes be a little bit of a uh a little bit of a trick the sort of what your nose smells right off a uh, a fresh bottle i sometimes find uh with the cheaper stuff if you open it and sort of let it sit um even just a couple of days like open it so it aerates a little bit um and then obviously put the lid back on it, it gets rid of some of the more intense um uh, aroma and uh, that sort of thing and sort of, yeah, opens up the flavour a little bit more, but uh, maybe I'm just <laughs> nitpicking. Uh, although, again, I did, I can't think, not in the last quarter, probably like the last fifth or tenth, so I just kind of had to go down with a little bit of cake. Sure. <laughs> just yep. because it's like, yeah, I would enjoy this, but I kind of, at the same time, I want something a bit more easier than this. This is a little too intense for winding down. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Hey, uh, That's not the funny part. Like, I think I, I do is kind of have, go off, have a little nap, wake up. I think I go and do a few things. And as I'm heading back to my room and that, I just fucking just fell on the lounge and just passed out. <laughs> right. Interesting. Cool. I can have probably the best night's sleep I had in a good while. Uh-huh. <laughs> cool. Because, yeah, as, literally as soon as I hit the, um, the couch, there's just lights out. Yeah, for sure. 
Nice. All I'm right. Just last time you had a moment like that where you, you, you kind of hit the bed or just yeah, go on the mattress and as soon as you do, you just lights out. Uh-huh. Um, this weekend, actually, uh, it was my, my cousin's wedding. So it was, a, it was a pretty big one on Saturday night. Um, but, yeah, it's a, it was just a, generally a very long day. Um, yeah. So, yeah, as soon as I got home, just – Passed out. Yeah, <laughs> something <laughs> like that. Um, yeah. All right. We'll wrap this one up here, I reckon. Yeah. Gone a bit over, but <laughs> when haven't we not gone a bit over? Yeah. So I guess do you want to do the outro for episode 12? Sure. All right. Thank you for joining us again for episode 12 of the Some People podcast. Uh here oh my god! Um, I forgot to mention you. Yeah, you're the co-host, James. Yes, so James, that's me. And god, yeah, we've got to remember to do this. <laughs> no, just I actually remember to introduce co-host at start. Yeah, but I guess I was until I guess you, got, you kind of well got confused about what we were recording. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. All right, and obviously Briggsy here. Yeah. Um, let us know how we're doing, Briggs. Briggsy. <laughs> <laughs> whatever, whatever floats me boat at the moment. For sure. Leave us a comment, subscribe, give us a, give us a share around and uh, yeah, let us know how we're going. If you have any topics, any, any things that you'd like to hear a discussion about, yeah. let us know. And actually, well, I guess we could kind of add that, but then, well, there's going to be episode 11 and then after doing episode 11, I'm going to be sick of doing that. So <laughs> sure. I guess we can um, exclude that subject and we're not going to tell what that subject is. <laughs> Although by the time they're hearing this, they'll know what the subject of episode 11 was. Yes, for sure. So what's the point of spoiling it if <laughs> it's already happened? Yes. Yeah. It would have already happened. Yep. <laughs> but still we may exclude that subject from the future. See how we go. Depends on how much shit we cop from it. Right. All right. Anyway, we'll catch you next time. Yep. So, um, hi, this is Future Briggsy here. I just got to let you know that um, due to some things that are coming up, um, there will probably be a sh- quite a, well, a short pause in our content coming out. And not only that, but while I'm here, um, episodes are also going to come out later on the same day. But I was saying that, I guess... Well, it's just going to, well, it's coming out later, same day for me, but I guess it'd probably be like the next day or so for someone who's like in America. So, it's, well, wouldn't it still be later in the day for them? Yeah, it's a shame that I don't have the co host's uh, mic set up, but you could probably pick, hear him in that in the background. But I guess with that, I might as well say, well, I guess. Well, Briggsy signing off. <laughs>